Good day, I'm Pastor Lance Henderson of Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina, and this is Daily Prayer for July 3rd in the year 2020. Our reading today is from Psalm 40, 145, beg your pardon, and just selected verses, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall praise you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all your people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. A quick story. A buddy of mine was just a relatively new pastor and he had gone into a diner or something like this and he was wearing his clerical collar and said, and a guy came up to him and said, uh, you're one of those Christians? And he said, yeah. And uh, he said, well, I, I gotta tell you, I don't believe in God. And I don't believe in your God. And it's a pretty confrontational way to start a conversation. And the guy really wasn't looking for a conversation, but uh, my friend led him into one. And the question he asked him was, well, let me ask you, um, why don't you tell me about this God that you think I believe, believe in? Well, it turns out that the guy's wife had recently died and they had taken all kinds of drastic measures, including some significant prayer, so that she might live and she died a young death. And so therefore he did not believe in God. Look, it's easy, I mean, it's a fair argument. So if God is all powerful, and God is uh, all loving, then why is there evil in the world? And, okay, it's kind of a young philosopher's type of endeavor. Uh, obviously, it's a lot more complicated than that. But I think the best equally sophomoric response is, okay, uh, the Christian or the believer has to contend with the notion of why is there evil in this world? But the non-believer has to put up with the question of why is there anything at all? Why is there something rather than nothing? And that's a fair question to contend with as well. Scholars spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the overall theme of the Old Testament is. Uh, and you often hear, well, the Old Testament is where the mean God is, and then the New Testament God is the nice God. And yet, you know, you can look at the entirety of the Old Testament, 66 books by almost as many authors, and ask it, well, what is the general theme? And maybe it's God and Israel, or God and creation, and how that unfolds, or God headed towards salvation, all these good things. But one of the best contenders is, what is God like? And this very first, pat, and this very first verse I had underlined. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. That pa passage, that one verse, is cited frequently in the Old Testament. Frequently. Gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. It's the theme of many psalms. It's the theme of the entire book of Jonah. Uh, it pops up, I think, a couple other places. But overall, that's the theme. What is God like? He's gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. So it's a good passage to just kind of even memorize if you don't, can't remember the exact place that, you know, it's in, for example, uh, Psalm 145 right here in verse eight. If you can't remember its exact location, the day somebody just wants to talk about the mean God of the Old Testament and just say, um, explain who this God is. 
the God who the very scriptures shout out is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. It'll start a conversation. Our, today is July 3rd, and we're going to be uh, celebrating uh, the United States of America's uh, founding or the signing of the Declaration of Independence, I suppose. And um, so we call that Independence Day, and I thought we would say a prayer for our nation. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, you have given us this land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless your land with honesty in the workplace, truth in education, and honor in daily life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us and his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, and happy 4th of July.